So welcome back. In our last video, we discussed the negotiation strategies. Right now, we're going to focus on legal considerations and necessary paperwork for selling your business. So what we got going on is you do want to consider the legal documents. A great one that you want to have first off is letter of intent. So it's called a LOI, typically. Um, the purchase agreement, the non-compete agreement. So that means that once you sell your company for X period of time or for X area, you won't be, you know, in competition. And then a confidentiality agreement. So each document serves a specific role in the process. So uh, a non-disclosure agreement is also a friendly one that you want to have. Uh, so that way they don't disclose any of your information, uh, which at this point, uh, you know, after the negotiation uh, on the front side, you're going to want the non-disclosure before you mention anything, non-disclosure. Um, when it comes to negotiations, uh, that's when the letter of intent can be given. Um, and then it's going to be the purchase agreement, non-compete and confidentiality agreement uh, will be signed once someone gives a written offer on your company. The role of lawyers and accountants is just to draft and review legal documents. Make sure you read the legal documents that you're signing. Uh, by doing that, it's going to help protect you. Um, it'll help you address tax issues. You can ask your lawyers and your accountants early on about what the tax implications are of what you're doing. And then also you get to ensure compliance with regulations. Um, you know, in the cleaning space, the nice thing is, is that typically compliance with regulations is typically not an issue. But what you do want to pay attention to is the tax issues. Will you put yourself in a higher tax bracket for a year? Or are there ways for you to kind of shift that? Um, or maybe you're like, hey, I do want the higher lump sum. And so, you know, I need the money more now. Um, <clears throat> avoiding legal issues. It's common by having clear documentation, full disclosure of information, and addressing any existing liabilities. Learn from examples of legal issues faced by other business owners and how they were resolved. So again, you know, in the last video where we were talking about get someone who's exited a similar size thing, find out, you know, some of the different things that they have. When you're exiting a company of $400,000 revenue and you have someone else assume your name, the legal ramifications are typically very little to you. Again, I say very little. So that way you pursue a little bit with your lawyer to find out what it is and what the ramifications are. The person acquiring your company is not acquiring your EIN number, even though they might be acquiring all of your uh, social media stuff. Um, you know, And then the due diligence. This is going to be a critical part of it. It, you know, it is a thorough examination of your business. So be prepared to provide detailed, very detailed information and answer all the questions. Um, the details that someone's going to ask, depending upon the structure and style of the sale of your company, if you're doing a deal such as, hey, uh, let's do it to where it's 20% of profit or 20% of revenue uh, for the first year after the exit, um, you know, with that one, the buyer might not ask as many questions on the specifics. They may wait to dig into the books a little bit deeper. They're still going to want to know where your demographic is, where your clients are, how many clients you had, what your churn rate was. But if you're wanting something to where you're like, hey, I just want a solid number. You know, my business is 500,000 revenue. I want $500,000, um, you know, paid off over a five-year period. That seller is going to ask a lot of nuanced questions. I don't think you're actually going to get a full valuation like that. If your company was a company of $5 million revenue and you had a 20% profit margin, you could easily get, or you could possibly get that 5X of the uh, owner discretionary earnings. Uh, when you deal with something that's small, uh, you know, if it's a company around 500,000, chances are it's going to be someone is buying your client list and paying you based upon the revenue for a preset period of time. They might be gracious enough to give it up to a year. Um, but, you know, they're going to need enough skin on the bone, meat on the bone, so that way they can have a healthy profit even in the new acquisition. Um, 
so you know it might be common in something like that they'll give you half of what they feel like the profit would be for the first year based upon the revenue and so for example if you had a company of a uh, million dollars or 1.2 million dollars a year revenue so it generated a hundred thousand a month in revenue and the profit margin was 20 percent um so twenty thousand dollars a month the seller might uh the buyer might say you know what i'll give you half of the profit for the first year and i'll keep half of it so meaning that each month you would be getting a ten thousand dollar check split out over the next 12 months and as your client churn rate if your client churn rate was five percent a month it would slightly go down a little bit each month but you know there's different ways to negotiate with a buyer about what are the payouts and how to do that of what you feel like is you know your big thing and so again that's where in the beginning of this we started with your why knowing your number of what you want and then you can say okay you know, I'm stuck on that number. I really have to get that. And then you work at achieving that number by optimizing your company. So that way you're able to get it. So, um, you know, with these, you do always want to have the legal uh, documentations. You want to seek out a lawyer. Again, the essential documents that you're going to have after someone's already signed the uh, non-disclosure agreement. And when they've written an offer to you, they're going to give you a letter of intent that's called, that's kind of like the written offer, the purchase agreement, the non-compete agreement, and confidentiality agreement. So that way, uh, you know that they're not going to be broaching in uh, during this phase, phase of them seeking out and gaining more information about your company.